One of the fundamental things, not just in Sublime, but in any software that allows you to manipulate text, is the concept of selecting text. Whether you're doing that so you can copy it to use it in some other location, cutting it so that you can remove it and replace it somewhere else, or just get rid of it altogether, or marking it for some other application-specific purpose, selecting text is a very common thing to do in a text editor and can be very important in the Sublime Text plugin as well. And that's why, in today's Plugin 101, we're covering the basics of how to manipulate the selection from a Sublime Text plugin. Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan here, here. Welcome back to Plugin 101, the video course teaching you how to become a package and plugin author in Sublime Text. And the topic of today's lesson is the selection, how we can query what is actually selected inside of any given file or how we can modify what's selected inside of any given file. This is something that we've actually kind of touched on in some of the example plugins in other lessons in the series, but we're going to dive into it in more detail today. And in order to follow along with this, you do need to understand how regions work in Sublime Text as well, in Sublime Text plugins, because selections are inherently just a visualization of regions. And we'll see more about that in just a moment. If you're unfamiliar with regions, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about with a region, or if you just haven't used them very much and you're not quite sure, not to worry. Down below my talking head is the description of the video, and in there is the link to the Plugin 101 playlist, which will give you all the information you need about regions and how to work with them. And perhaps you might also want to use the buttons down there to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so that when other video lessons become available, you'll know about them right away. And uh, one last thing to say before we dive into this is that we're going to see a sample plugin in just a moment that shows some of the stuff that you can do with selections. And uh, there's a link to that down in the description as well. So as always, if you'd like to play along or use it as the basis of your own explorations into Sublime Text plugin writing, you can do that. You don't have to pause the video and transcribe it. You can just download it and get to playing. Now in Sublime Text, the selection is maintained by instances of the selection class, which is publicly documented. And if you were to look at it, it's fairly unassuming. There's only five methods in this class, which makes it seem like there's not a lot you can do. But believe me, these five methods are very powerful. They have all the functionality you need to modify the selection in any way that you might like. What you might notice missing here is a constructor. And that's because it's Sublime's job to create instances of the selection class. And it just gives you those instances as you ask for them, which as it happens, you can get by using the cell method of the view class, which points out that the selection is something that's distinct and unique to any particular view. And if you remember back to the lesson on terminology where we talked about all the different things you can hear about inside of a Sublime Text plugin, we talked about the idea that a view is, as its name suggests, a visualization at some piece of text, which is stored in a buffer. It's possible for multiple views to share the same underlying buffer. And you can do this by using the options in the file menu to make a new view into the current file. You end up with two views that share the same buffer, but are otherwise distinct, which means any changes you make to one are immediately represented in the other. But it's possible for you to scroll those two around and have different edit positions inside of either of them. That's possible in part because the selection is referenced uh, based on the view and not on the buffer that it is underlying. Now, if we were to look at the documentation for the selection class, let's, uh, it's got this uh, two sentence blurb on the top, starts with maintains a set of regions. The first thing we can infer from that is set more than one. And in fact, if you're a user of Sublime Text, you'll be well aware that it's very possible uh, to have more than one selection in Sublime at any given time, which makes it very powerful for doing things like selecting all the instances of a variable quickly and easily and replacing them or deleting them or making other changes of that nature. This is possible because there can be more than one selection. It also says that this is a set of regions. And this is why we learned about regions before we got to this point, because the selection is, for all intents and purposes, a region. What do we know about a region? It has two points, an A and a B, and spans some section of text. Sound familiar? That's a selection. A selection is, in fact, just a region. And in the same way that a region starts at one point and ends at another, but it's possible to start at a later point in the file and end at an earlier point, selections work, in fact, the exact same way. It's possible for those to go that way. Now, this is something that is also very important. Selections can be empty which we know because regions can be empty, right? If the start of a region and the end of a region are the same character, that region spans no text, which is an empty region. That's also an empty selection. It is in fact possible for selections to be empty and 
by and large, selections most of the time are, in fact, empty. It's the statistical outlier where selections are not empty, and that's because the selection is also a representation of the cursor or caret where the insertions are happening in the file as well. And again, this is something that we covered in that terminology lesson way back. It bears repeating here. The selection and the caret are for all intents and purposes, the same thing. You can think of the selection as the caret and its position and what other characters around it happen to be selected. If you think about it, if you, have you ever come up with a selection in Sublime in any way via any plugin or by manual intervention where there wasn't some amount of selected text with a cursor immediately on the left or the right of it? No, and that's because the selection always has a cursor associated with it. So if you've ever looked into the API documentation and said, ah, I just want to know where the cursor is so that I can do something in that particular location in the file, that doesn't exist because it's the selection that has that particular information. Now, the documentation also mentions that the regions are kept in sorted order, which is important. The sort order here is ordered in the file from top down. So whether you create a selection on the first line of the file and then the last or the last and then the first, the selections are always in a top down order, which is great for you as a plugin author. It makes sure that when you're dealing with selections and modifications in the buffer, that they will always be in an orderly top-down progression, which is a reference back to the lesson where we talked about replacing and deleting text and why you have to be careful about manipulating contents of the buffer. If you imagine if you were trying to iterate over the selection and do some sort of modification to it, but you had to somehow track what order the selections were in to make sure you did that in the right order, your life would be an absolute nightmare. Now, as we said, every selection is in fact a cursor or a caret, and that's represented in the region by the B point, the second point. So you might think of this as if you started at some character and held down shift and the right arrow to move forward right and extend the selection, the caret ends up on the right hand side of the selection. Or alternately, if you went to the left instead of the right, the cursor would go to the other end. That's just an indication that there's a span of text that starts later in the file than it ends. The end point of the region that represents a selection is always the point where the cursor is located. Uh, and in the case where the selection is empty, A and B are the same. In that case, it doesn't matter, but you should always use B for that. This is in fact something that we can modify. And we have an example plugin that shows that very thing. And that is this plugin right here. Remember, there's a link to this down in the description. So if you'd like to follow along with this or use it as the basis of your own explorations in Sublime Text plugin development, you don't need to transcribe this. Now, what we have here are three commands that show all of the operations that you can take in order to manipulate the selection in a, a file in any way that you like. And then a fourth bonus command, if you will, that looks like it's going to do something and it kind of does the something, but it also kind of doesn't do the something. And if you want to know why that is the case and why you should be careful not to fall into this particular pitfall, keep watching to the end of the lesson. The first command here is reverse select all. What do we mean by that? Well, if I was to use the select all command built into Sublime, we end up with, of course, all of the text selected. And what this command is actually doing is selecting from the beginning of the file to the end of the file. It ends at the bottom of the file. The end of the region is the B region. The B region is where the cursor is. And we end up with a selection with the cursor at the bottom of the file. Now what we have here in this command is first we're creating a region that still spans the entire content of the file, but it starts at the bottom and ends at the beginning. The second value here is the B point. The B point is zero. Zero is the point that's at the beginning of the file. So the cursor will end up being at the top of the file. And then we call the add method of the selection object for the view associated with this command and ask it to please add this region to the selection. Now the documentation for the add says that it will merge existing selections together if it needs to do it, which goes hand in hand with the idea that the selection class itself says that it maintains a list of sorted non-overlapping selection regions. What does that mean for us? Ostensibly, it means this. If you want to have some, plug some uh, text selected inside of your plugin, you just create a region that spans that text and tell Sublime, select it, and it will. A couple of different things could happen. If you told it to select something where there's no selections anywhere around it, then a new selection will be added to the list for the region that you provide. But if your region 
overlaps in any way any other region, they'll be coalesced together. So for example, if this text was selected and you wanted this text selected, you end up with one selection that spans everything. Or of course, if everything was selected, no matter what selections you add, they just merge together and nothing happens. So when I invoke this, we still end up with all of the text selected, but the cursor is up at the top of the file instead of down at the bottom, which shows that we can add any selections we like, and we can also control if we want to, which side of the selected text the caret ends up on. Now, the second command here is the inverse sort of of this. Instead of adding some selection, it's subtracting some selection. And again, this works in the exact same way. You don't have to look through the list of all selections to find one closest to the area where you want to subtract something and then try to modify that region. If you don't want some text selected, you just create a region that spans that particular text. You give it to Sublime's selection class and you say, I don't want this selected and it will do all of the work for you. So here we're creating a region that starts at point seven and ends at point 14, which as the comment says is the word Sublime on line one, and then we subtract that from the selection. So if we were to select all, as we did previously, again, we have one selection here that's spanning the whole file, and then I subtract some selection, we end up with two selections. The first selection is everything to the left of the word sublime, and the second one is to everything to the right. And note also that the caret flipped positions on that first one as a part of that, that split operation. And this actually will work in other ways too, because if part of this word sublime was selected, and we say we don't want the word sublime selected, then when we invoke that command, indeed, that part is subtracted away, but the rest of the selection remains exactly the same as it was previously. So using those methods, you can go ahead and uh, add any selections you might like and subtract any. And again, you don't need to worry about whether or not there's any selections nearby. You just say, I want it selected or not. Sublime does it. This third command here shows us a little bit more because we've seen how we can add selections and subtract some selections, but we haven't seen how we could actually see what selections actually exist. Say if you wanted to know where the cursors are located in the file or you wanted to look somewhere in the vicinity of the selection, you need to actually know where those selections are. How do we do that? And uh, also, what if you wanted to manipulate the selections in a more specific manner? How could we do that? And this it demonstrates that as well. So the first part of this is showing how we could actually look at existing selections if we want to, because view.cell gives you the set of regions, but you can actually iterate over that as we are here with a for loop if you wanted to just go over every selection and work on them one at a time to do something. You can also call uh, the len, sorry, you can use the len built-in function with the selection as an argument to see how many selections there actually are, and then index them directly by name, and by a number rather, sorry, and I believe we covered that in a previous example. The self view cell zero always gives you the first selection, and then you could say dot b to get the very first cursor that appears anywhere within the file. What we're doing here is creating an empty list and then one by one iterating over every selection, and we create a new region that has the same endpoints, the same a and b as the existing selection, but reversed the other way. And remember, the B point of the selection is the point where the caret is actually located. So what we end up with after line 21 is new cell being a list of every selection that exists, but the caret will be on the opposite side. And then the next two lines here do something that we haven't seen just yet. Self.view self gives you the view, cell gets the selection object, clear says, please remove all selections. And this literally removes every selection from the buffer. And you got to be careful with this one because this will remove all the cursors from the buffer. If you don't add something back, the user will be surprised to notice that there's no cursor insertion point anywhere in their file for them to be able to type anything and they might have to bring in their mouse to click. Also, a lot of plugins might assume that there's at least one place in the file where there's a selection where there's at least one cursor. So you can cause errors to stack up in a user's console if they happen to be using a plugin that makes that rather uh, obvious assumption, I would think, by uh, assuming that there's selections, then you clear them and don't add one back. So always make sure that you add at least one selection after you clear. 
the other line here doesn't add all, which is the exact same thing as add, only it does it over all the selections in a list instead of you having to manually iterate over that yourself. So what we end up with here is a command where if we had more than one selection, like so, when we invoke this particular command, the selection jumps to the, uh, sorry, the cursor jumps to the other side of the selection. So you could flip flop those back and forth as you like. And of course, if there was only one selection in the buffer, the command does nothing. It's actually removing the selection and replacing it with one that's exactly identical because in an empty selection, A and B are the exact same value. Now the last command here, this is the uh, this is called broken select command for a very specific reason, and that's because this is in fact broken. Now the first thing to note is that this is a window command and not a text command as we have seen in all of the other examples here. And it's a uh, run method doesn't uh, get an edit object and also window commands associate with the window and not a file. So we need to call self.window to get the window that this command is running inside of and then ask that window what view is active so that we can get a view in order to take a particular action. And other things that we can do with this window class are things that we're going to cover in an upcoming lesson in plugin 101. So if you haven't already done so, now would be a great time to use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so you'll know when that lesson becomes becomes available. Once we have this region, we very simply just clear the selection and then add a selection back. And it's a selection that is a region that starts and ends at position 14, which uh, happens to be the end of the word sublime on line one up there, as we know, because our previous command uh, subtracted selections up to that point. So I'm going to bring the cursor a little farther up uh, into the file here so we can see this. And when I invoke this command, you might expect the cursor to jump to that specific location because we cleared the selection and then we added a new one, but it didn't actually do anything. However, if I was to push left, the cursor jumps up a couple of lines and the, cur the cursor was actually at this location and move left, it just didn't look like it. Similarly, imagine that there was some selected text like this, and then we invoke the command. Again, you might expect the selection to be empty, but it's not, and the cursor didn't move. And then I might push left in order to jump the cursor to the left of what appears to be visually selected, which is the start of the word sublime plugin, but again, it moves over. Now, the reason for this is that this is a window command that we're dealing with here, but window commands should not manipulate the selection. Clearly, it can, but it shouldn't. And the reason for this is perhaps semi-esoteric. There's a command in Sublime called soft undo that allows you to undo selection state changes. In order to undo things, changes have to be tracked. In order to track things, you need an edit object. In order to get an edit object, you need a text command. Hence, trying to manipulate the selection from inside of a window command while it actually will work also kind of doesn't work. It messes up soft undo in some instances. And also because the window command doesn't get an edit arg argument by default, and this particular one hasn't done anything like invoke some other text command that actually modifies the buffer, Sublime thinks that this command could not possibly have changed the visual state of anything inside of the file. So it doesn't bother trying to redraw the window. That would be wasted time. But we might note, for example, that the selection is down here on line three. I invoke that particular command. It looks like nothing happened. If we force a visual update to the window, say, for example, by opening the command palette, as soon as I did that, you can see the selection behind this jumped up to one because the you can see the line one has a different background there. And if I close the command palette, the cursor is actually in the location that we might expect it to be. So if this was a text command instead of a window command, this would actually work as expected. So be very careful about this. While you can get this to work with various uh, trickeries to basically trick Sublime into updating the window after you do this, it's really better to do this inside of a text command instead. And with that restriction in mind, it's very easy to augment the existing selection to add or remove without even having to worry about what's currently selected right now. And we also have the ability, if we want to, to see what's currently selected and 
modify that list as well if that's something that we'd like to do in our plugin. That's going to do it for this lesson. Remember, you can use those buttons down below my head to thumb, subscribe, and share, and ring the bell notification icon so you'll know when the next lesson becomes available. If you have any questions about this, let me know those down in the comment section as well. Until the next lesson, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.